Shake, rattle, and hum. Cups up. God bless you, and welcome to A Morning Word. Pastor Randy Fuller here in Northport, Alabama. I don't know where you're listening to us from. Uh, I don't know where what time it is when you hear this, whether it's live or recorded, but we welcome you. We thank you. All we ask is that if you get anything out of this, that you would share it, share it, share it. Also, check it out on YouTube. Like those pay, uh, channels for us, if you would. We're trying to build that up. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We want to give a cups up and a shout out to all of our school teachers, to our first responders, to our military personnel. Our morning word this morning is a worthless penny. <clears throat> How many of you have seen a penny and stepped over it or picked it up or thrown it away or whatever, tossed it in a, a, a pool that you know was a total waste of time and a waste of the penny? How many of y'all ever done that? Yesterday, <clears throat> Micah found a penny. Now, I don't know where he found this penny, but we were sitting at the breakfast table, and uh, I'm going to hold it up close so you can see it, and you've all seen pennies like this. You can tell that it's a penny, but just by the shape and kind of the color, every now and then you see a little bit of the image. You can see that. That's a penny, okay? It's all dented up on the sides and on the edges. You can see that too. <clears throat> so Micah threw this out in the middle of the table, and he said, Papa, he said, is that penny any good anymore? I go, what do you mean, son? He said, I mean, can you use it? Can you, and I mean, I said, do you mean, can you spend it? He goes, yeah, can you spend it? I go, yes, I said, son, you can. I said, because most people don't pay attention to pennies, uh, and if it just looks like a penny uh, and resembles it, they'll usually take it. I said, but this penny's in rough shape. And I thought, uh-oh, here we got, a, we got a teaching moment. So I told him, I said, son, this penny at one time was brand new. It was copper. It was brand new. It was flawless. I said, but look at it now. You can barely tell it's a penny. I said, that's how sin has done us. I said, sin has scarred us <clears throat> and covered us and stained us to the point that you can barely tell what we were in the, in the beginning. And he started, you know, he, you could tell he was catching on. So at that moment, I set this penny aside and I said, that's what I'm going to teach on tomorrow. And it just so happened, so help me, when I opened my Bible this morning to continue reading in the book of John, I've been reading in, in 2 Samuel and in John, I'm at John chapter 4 today, the woman at the well. And uh, you guys know the story of the woman at the well, so I'm not going to go through the whole story, but I do want to read about three verses of it to kind of set the context for it. First of all, <clears throat> I want to read... The first, uh, I want to read verse 3, verse 4, verse 9. All right, you ready? Verse 3. But he needed, um, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. Verse 9. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, Ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Now, let me stop there and kind of give the background for that. When the northern kingdom of Israel was captured by the Assyrians, <clears throat> they left a remnant of the Jewish people, the poor, the maimed, the blind, the least of these. They left them back uh, in the land because they were no threat. Well, what happened was uh, foreigners moved into the land. Uh, some Assyrians and other foreigners moved into the land and the Jewish people that were left behind intermarried with them. Everyone else had been carried off or, or killed. So they intermarried with them and they became what was known as a mixed race of Jews. Now, when the Jews who the Southern Kingdom was eventually uh, shuttered off to Babylon in like fashion, but when they came back intact, they despised the people of the northern kingdom <clears throat> and in the area of the Galilee and in and around the city of Samaria uh, because of the, they were called Samaritans because they lived in and around the area of Samaria and they were mixed race and they felt like that the Jewish people, uh, those Jewish people had betrayed their country, their national pride, intermixed with uh, foreigners and be became polluted. So therefore the pure race Jews that abided in the southern kingdom did everything they could to stay out of the way and have no dealings with the Samaritans. That's why Jesus went to Samaria. 
He didn't just go there because he thought it was a good idea. He knew that there was a Samaritan woman who was ready to meet Jesus at the well. <clears throat> and Jesus positioned himself there so that he could meet her. Now, when she comes on the scene, she first says, why are you talking to me? I'm a Samaritan. She recognizes he's a Jew, all right? That's, that's one thing. So we understand that Jesus came. Jesus, in this story, we can see that Jesus came for the least of these, and not just for the least of these, but the worst of these. He came for the penny that everyone else would step over, step around, uh, or throw away. He came for those that were despised and rejected. And Samaritans, as a group, people group, were despised and rejected by the Jews. And, and we sometimes take on the same, after we get saved, we sometimes take on the same attitude towards other lost people. They're just nasty old pennies, and they're not worth uh, sp uh, in, investing time with, and, the, and they're, they're useless. As Micah says, they're, they're, you can't use them anymore. Well, Jesus begs to differ because the understanding that we now have is that we were all like this penny. We were all like this penny. There's no difference in this penny uh, and any other penny that's been run over and messed up. A penny is a penny, and there's no difference in sinners. A sinner is a sinner. It doesn't matter. Well, we find out that this lady has been, uh, you know, Jesus brings her to a place of confrontation. He tells her in verse 10, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, uh, who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Well, he's telling her that uh, if you knew who it was you were talking to, you would ask me and I'd give you living water, not water like you're drawing out of this well that's going to uh, leave you thirsty again, but living water that springs up to everlasting life. That, 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 that's what he told her. Now, uh, she asked him, where are you going to get the living water? He says, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. And so she says in verse 15, now this is so important, guys. I hope you catch this. He says, in, the, the woman says in verse 15, the woman said to him, sir, give me this water. Watch this now, that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Now notice that she's coming there to draw water. <clears throat> Why? Because everybody needs water. So now she's thinking that he's going to give her something that will prevent her from ever having to come back to the well. Now, this is so important for us. She thinks that what he's offering is going to make her life easier. And many times we sell or market Christianity by telling people, if you will just repent of sin and give your heart to Jesus, your life will become better. Your life will become easier. Well, that's because we live in the United States of America and we have no concept of what life is like around 95% of the world. There are people that are saved today that uh, are still wondering where their food's coming from tomorrow. There are people that are born again, even missionaries on the mission field, wondering what, what, uh, you know, if they will be uh, lose their life by dark by proclaiming Jesus Christ. I don't call that necessarily an easy life a worthy life, but not an easy life. And sometimes we peddle Jesus as being someone who's going to uh, give us our get out of jail free card and then make our life easier. That's not, that's not true at all. He came to give her a new life, a new spiritual life. He came to forgive her and to give her an everlasting hope in him. He came to restore her back to her heavenly father, her creator, that he might become her heavenly father. Jesus did not come so that you and I could have an easier life. He came that we might have forgiveness of our sin and eternal life. And eternal life is not a thing. It's a who. It's a relationship. And this is eternal life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Eternal life is in a relationship with God. Eternal life is not not having to go to work every day anymore. Eternal life is not having the new car all the time or the perfect child or the, or, or, or the quintessential home on uh, the corner lot. You know, it's not, it's not uh, an easy path. It's a difficult path. But uh, to follow Christ, in a, to follow Christ in a, 
anti-Christ world is a difficult path. It's, it's the antithesis of easy. But sometimes we pimp Jesus as being, and the gospel as being our key to victory in the sense of attaining and having all that we want and having a carefree life. That's not true. And here's the, and, and, and if in case you thought that verse doesn't make the point, the next verse does. Look at it. So she said, give me this water. Here's what he said. Go call your husband and come here. Now he's going to bring her to the place where he's, now he's, now it's going to dawn on her. He says, go get your husband and bring him here. She said, I don't have a husband. Mm, that's true. See, she's not surrendering any more information than is necessary. I don't have a husband. He said, you're right. The, uh, you've had five husbands and the, the man that you're living with now is not your husband. She goes, oh, snap. What he was offering her was forgiveness. That's why she dropped her water bucket, turns around and goes back into town. And who does, it go to, who does she go to? It says that she went and told all the men. Why did she go to all the men? Because she had been with all the men. And every man knows who she is. And she goes and tells the men, come see a man. Hello. Come see a man who didn't try to take something from me but tried to give something to me freely and in doing so was willing to forgive me, forgive me of my sin. He was willing to talk to me as a woman. He was willing to talk to me as a Samaritan woman. He was willing to talk to me as a sinful Samaritan woman. And she just dropped her water bucket, which is what she was after, and went back into the city and started talking to all the men. I want you to come see the man who didn't try to run over me and use me, who didn't step over me and step around me, but actually came to where I was, met me on purpose, and shared with me the gospel. All right? And so they go out and they hear Christ for themselves and they believe. Now, the Bible says, Paul says, this is a, 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 a worthy saying that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You see, when we stand next to Jesus, like this woman at the well, okay, we're not comparing pennies. When we stand next to Jesus, we're standing next to eternal life. We're standing next to the creator and sustainer of all that is seen and unseen. We are standing next to the only one who is truly holy and righteous. And in that sense, my penny compared to him is the worst penny of all, okay? So she understood that she was the worst sinner of all in comparison to the one who was talking to her at the well. See, we get into, we get into this, this namby-pamby religious comparison. I'm not, well, you know, I, I'm not perfect, but I'm not like, hey, listen, you were dead in your trespasses and sin, just like me. We were worthless pennies useless pennies but God demonstrated his own love toward us towards me and towards you and that while we were still sinners still like this Christ died for us okay so no one no one on that day could turn around and continue to talk about that woman that woman the sinful woman the sleeping around woman the huzzy they couldn't talk about her anymore because they all had come face to face with the Holy One. Now they all understand that they're in the same boat that she is. Their sins may have different names, but they're still sins that leave us scarred, marred, lost, and undone, and we all needed a Savior. Now that's good news, guys. You know why? Because we're all like this. We're all like this. And even today, after we're saved, we're still not all that in a bag of chips with regard to how we live our lives. We're, we're loved by God and eternally secure in the love of the Savior. But we're, we all fall and fail and get scuffed up. But the scripture tells us that God is faithful. He is fa if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, there's not one penny that Jesus will step over. There's not one penny like this that Jesus would step around. He would bend over for any penny. 
He would walk across the street for a penny. He would walk around the world for the penny. He would go to the cross for the penny, and he'd go to the cross for the vilest of sinners, for those that had been scarred and marred and disfigured by sin, for those who have no help, no hope, and are lost in this world, Jesus will come. He will not pass you by. So to answer Micah's question, Papa, is it still good? Yes, it is still good. It is still good. It is not beyond hope. It is not beyond the eternal living water of Christ. I don't care who it is, where they are, the only sin that God will not forgive is unbelief. He told the woman at the well, if you knew who it was, you would ask me. Guys, listen to me. Doesn't matter if you're like this and have never been saved, if you ask Jesus to save you, he'll save you. Doesn't matter if you're like this today, even after you've been saved and you've fallen back into sin, you've transgressed back into sin. I'm telling you that today, if you will ask him, he will forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. There's not one penny that's worthless to Jesus. He will do anything and everything, and he has at the cross to make sure. The Bible said he needed to go through Samaria. Why? Because in Samaria, there were pennies that people were walking past. There were people who thought that they were, because they were Samaritan, they were no good. Because they were a woman, they were no good. Because they had been with women like that, they were no good. But Jesus came not just for her, but he came to her first so that he could use her to reach many others. You know why Jesus has saved you and you know why Jesus has uh, taken this out of your life and made you new? so that you could go and pick up pennies, so that you and I could go and tell other people that have been crushed, smushed, scarred and marred by sin, that there is a fountain of living water that cleanses us from all sin. I hope this helps you today. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, good Lord willing, and the saints don't rise. Now, let me tell you this before I let you go. Next week, I will be in a camp uh, a Native American family camp in Tallahena, Oklahoma. I would appreciate your prayers. I'm not going to be doing the morning word next week at all. Not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Not because I don't want to, but because I'll be in another field plowing over there. Sure, uh, they could use your uh, prayers. The camp could use your prayers. I could use your prayers. So if you just take a week and uh, just maybe minister to each other on Facebook um, and uh, stay in contact with one another and pray for us, uh, we certainly would appreciate it. Again, now, let me say this again. I'll see you tomorrow. Good Lord willing, and the saints don't rise. Peace out.